on August 3rd of 2017 when I sent in my leave of information in the nature of Crow Levanto, I recounted how within 72 hours there had been an incident where presumably the computers at the public library had gone down. But when they came back up, there was a process whereby all of the computers in the network were accessible from the desktop I was on at the time. I contended that this was part of a premeditated act, that they were orchestrating something that was supposed to appear to be a form of cyber incident because they were actually engaged in acts of money laundering or some equivalent effort to divert large amounts of money or assets as part of illegal activity. I'd observed this several times before, including in May of 2017, in a way that had been recounted at the time as one way and in one manner, and then later information changed. It was announced at some point in time later that not only had there been a major deal regarding an acquisition, but there had been alleged hacks. I've spent several years now watching how specifically the state of Texas, but not exclusively the state of Texas, ends up having an announcement about something getting hacked when that's not what happened at all. What ended up happening is somebody was promised something highly illegal that they were not supposed to actually feel entitled to have or obtain. And in the course of that, there needed to be a lot of resources that were pooled so that the leverageability for its successful accomplishment could be completed. And when something either did not comply because it was knowingly and willingly engaged illegally in order for it to be successful, or there was a default because someone was not able to meet their promises, it triggered something that resulted in data getting lost or a breach of security. And because nobody's been honest about the experimentation on human beings as biological interfaces with various cybernetic processes or cyber processes, then it is completely misrepresented. I contend this is part of an intentional effort after they orchestrated September 11th to create a temporary period relatively under the auspices of the Terrorism Risk Insurance Program so that they could pool a ton of data and aid and abet an already predetermined process for bankrupting the government so that people's private data and information could be parsed off and sold out to whoever in the private sector had already set up for a cut. This was exactly what they've been doing. And unfortunately, like it or not, once you actually get the pieces, the in evidence, and you track what they do, it's exactly what they're doing. And every day they try to cover it up and every day they lie about it. They are demonstrating that they absolutely 100% intended to do this very thing. So we're not at a point where we can try to say or get away with saying, well, we didn't know, it's bullshit. This is exactly what happened is exactly what I said and was concerned had happened in Houston at the time. This water main break reporting happened. There's a time stamping on a local ch news channel for the same metric that would have been the date on a motion I submitted in this very effort that just mysteriously disappeared from the Supreme Court of Texas only to come up twice in the course of presidential campaign tactics where the specific motion was actually used as an option by two different presidential candidates, one who was running for president at the time and one who had already run as president but executed that option at a, another political event. So don't try to allow for a misrepresentation of what this is. You intentionally sat on obstructed and denied any access to due process for now four years and now you're using it as a formula. This is exactly the accusation that has been going on. This is the difference between an outlay process and a legitimate accrual accounting situation that would actually meet benchmarks and allow for things to be able to be accomplished and racketeering. In other words, 
be quiet. You know where you are in the cycle. Go along with it and we'll give you some roles so that you can demonstrate that you're going to agree to cooperate with the crime spree this time because we're so close. In 2017, we, well, we had to sabotage things in 2017 for certain groups of people so that what would happen? What ended up happening? Did they have to lean on their treasury because somebody obstructed what was supposed to be honoring of obligations due to illegal sanctioned activity? Yes, they did, right? And now we're four years later and the same things we tried to beta test in another country are what they're trying to do now. Yesterday, I specifically requested a follow-up to information regarding appropriations from the 2013 water appropriations bill. Why? Because among other things, there was a report that I had written in the early part of 2017 that identified specific appropriations in that bill. The electronic version of that bill has since been tampered with. Information has been altered, specifically against the water, about the water system in Flint, Michigan, but also about appropriations for the Trinity water system and their intersection with Kaufman County. I know exactly what that is. That's exactly what the allegations are. And apparently you wrangled enough of your media and enough of your political actors here in Dallas to literally engage that specific option for execution in regards to committing acts of securities fraud in order to aid and abet other crimes. See, these things accrue. There are time periods. You already know this. This isn't a teaching moment. You were required by law to do certain things in order to prevent crime. Kidnapping people and trying to extort them to agree to alter the story and lie. So that then you can say you were justified stealing their work and using it for acts of insurance fraud to cover up the crime is under no circumstances acceptable. And if we get to a point where we're at now, that those strategically coordinated moments of crime on one level are literally appearing that precisely in public announcements regarding major military investments, then we get into a very serious concern. Did you willingly and knowingly aid and abet the undermining of your own government so that you could infiltrate the military and get access to military assets to use against the American people? That's exactly what the accusations against the Army Futures Command are. The Army Futures Command is a domestic terrorist operation. Regardless of whatever the justification was for letting them get away with doing what they were doing, it has the effect of visiting acts of domestic terrorism on and against the American people. And I contend that members of Congress and the Senate have aided and abetted it. And they've created local syndicates of crime in connection with state administrations, including involving drugs and drug trafficking in connection with human trafficking through the alleged medical sector and the human services sector. Because somehow they've maintained some false paradigm where they're entitled to sabotage their own people in order to set up operations as part of some sort of command execution they intend to put abroad. And that's why those acts of terrorism domestically get categorized as some form of workers' accident and draw on a workers' comp claim. That ends up later materializing into the execution of a futures contract set up on that insurance claim that actually finances an act of terrorism abroad. That's exactly what the conspiracy is. Unfortunately, who or whatever you thought you were that had the authority to try to obstruct this and divert it into anything other than what it actually is has been proven to be substantially insufficient. 